now you can ask me <laughs> questions or a question. Otherwise, I ask you a question. I don't have a specific question yet. Um, there are always questions coming up in my mind while I sit here, but they disappear again. Um, like, Excellent. if they're not relevant. Yeah. You realize so many questions, so many doubts who come up are actually not relevant. Um, I was touched yesterday by what was said. I don't remember her name, <laughs> unfortunately. What was said? You? Shanti, um, when she said uh, that she struggles in how to confront her parents or deal with her parents, um, as I can relate to those, to those issues as well, and I also wonder often how to, how to deal with them best. Um, since they are real to some extent, right, in that life. Um, but there's no specific question yet. <laughs> now, in this retreat, you concentrate on yourself. Mm -hmm. Now you don't have to solve anything about the future, about others, just about yourself. This is not selfishness, this is wisdom. Because any kind of relation starts with you. So first you have to clarify who you are. If it's true what the wise say, that you in reality are peace, and you check this out, you check it out, you not believe it like a, a belief, check it out yourself if this is true. And you find out, yes, this is true. I am peace. Then you can handle all kind of situations which appear actively or passively. This will just happen. Otherwise, you run your entire life in vain after something which has to be solved. There will always arise some challenges. So 
the first inquire in the primary notion, which is I. All the philosophies from the West have not looked into this, have not looked into their primary notion, always looked into the mind. But the mind is secondary. The mind is simply constituted from thoughts. And there you will not find peace. So you spoke about your parents, I don't know your father, no, your father I don't know, but your mother I met. No? She met me first in a dream, she said, no? and here in Satsa. And concerning your mother, I can tell you frankly, you, didn't, you don't need to care at all. <laughs> she is... She is self-responsible. <clears throat> Actually, it's not about my parents, but more, <laughs> but more about my brother. Your brother. Mm. So another family member. Mostly. <laughs> It's a good attribute if you are compassionate, you know, if you are compassionate and you want others also to be happy. And of course, if somebody is very close, like close friend or family member, then we wish that he, she is happy. So in my experience, we cannot make others happy, permanent. We only can point to happiness, share this. And of course, what I also said yesterday to Marcel, somehow beam or spread is peace and happiness. No? Because actually we are all one. because it has such a tremendous impact for the entire universe, for the whole world, that one realizes, one being awakens from the dream.
like he woke up from the dream. So he could, with authority, guide him, who was a very spiritual man, many spiritual revelations, but did not realize. Why? Because as it said, it's so simple, it is you. But this I, we identify with body and mind, emotion, manifestation. To cut this, needs tremendous courage. Inquiry and surrender. So if we want others to be happy and we think this is my duty also, my responsibility, it's troublesome. Mm -hmm. It indicates also a kind of arrogance, thinking I am the ruler of the world. Instead of trusting this divine and be free from this burden. I understand it theoretically and practically <laughs> as well, but it's hard in situations where my brother, for example, calls me or approaches me and I'm directly confronted. Yes, therefore, with it. I invited you here so that your brother cannot call you. <laughs> <laughs> For three weeks, he cannot call you. <laughs> but you see how past works. He has been calling you, you have been reacting, and still it is in you. Now to allow yourself to be free. Mm -hmm. At least in satsang we should be entirely free. Free from the past. That's the invitation. To be free from the past. Free from the future. And then I have to see in the faces and the hearts of the people still there with the past. Still they dwell in the past. Still they project into the future. Taste heaven. Genieße den Himmel, which is only now. 
völlige Gegenwärtigkeit. And let from here, from this divine abode, untouched by time, untouched by space, let the future happen as it has to. How is that? How is that now? Feels right. <laughs> Feels right. Yeah. How does right feel for you, Timor? <laughs> Balanced, good, like it should be. Yes. So you feel you have this internal knowledge if you are troubled that this is not natural. We know when we are unhappy, when we are troubled, that this is not natural. That was your judgment, you said, how it should be. So here, Timur, in this retreat, in this satsang, allow, embrace the carefree now. The mind offers immediately some story And if it's not your brother, something else will come. That's the nature of the mind. The mind cannot exist without you. So it's like a vampire sucking on your life force. When you see that, you stay at peace. Mm -hmm. and from this peace, then, of course, you address what needs to be addressed in your daily life. Good luck. <laughs>